Soleimani is a corporate communications manager at Google, where she focuses on companies' people operations, diversity, culture, computer science education, and philanthropic social impact efforts with Google.org. Roya is also a lead Google trend analyst, highlighting trending topics across Google on radio and media across the country. Roya regularly speaks on personal branding and effective communications, and also serves as an advisor and operational partner at Pejman Mar Venture, helping early stage startups with their messaging and communication strategies. She holds a master's degree in Middle Eastern Studies from Georgetown University's School of Foreign Service and her bachelor's in Political Science and Public Policy from the University of California, Berkeley. Roya is involved with several community organizations, including the iBridges, the Iranian American Women's Foundation, the Omid Foundation Bay Area Committee, PIA, NextGen's National Organizing Committee, and a lot more. <laughs> and uh, in addition to being so smart, Roya is one of the sweetest and most lovable human being that I've had the pleasure to know. Roya. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited to be here. I may grab this microphone so I can be mobile. Uh, but as Elijah mentioned, we're going to talk today about effective communications and personal branding, something that I think is a work in progress always. So the first time I ever spoke behind a microphone, I was 10 years old. I couldn't even reach the podium. They had to put yellow pages under my feet in the 90s. And so <laughs> to be able to just get to the top and to speak. Now, I was fundraising at the time for what is now the Persian Center in Berkeley. It was a community idea, and my cousins were involved there. They were here in the South Bay. And they said, Roya, come talk about being a young Iranian American and what it would mean to, for, to you to have a place to call your own. And little did I know that 20 years later, I'd be here at one of our other amazing community centers talking about the importance of communication. I learned that at that age, that everyone has a story to tell, and when you use your voice, amazing things can happen. So I stayed involved with Persian Center all those years, and it sparked a confidence in me and an ability to hone the skill of public speaking. And as I said, it's a work in progress. It's constantly evolving. And something that I had a chance to practice at that age has now led me to the job I do every day, which is talking on behalf of Google. I serve as a spokesperson. I'm on the corporate communications team. And what that means is essentially it's Rawa Bitta Umumi, public relations. And I work on all of those different areas. I started out on the product side, which meant I had a lot of things to learn first. The engineering speak, the technical voice, and then finding a way to translate that into language that was easy to understand. So to kick things off, I just wanted to give a sense of what we'll cover today. So I have created, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, but my kind of 10 communications tips, then general communication strategies, a conversation about personal branding and then what I've learned about personal branding. And then, of course, I want this to be a conversation. So let's have a quick Q&A. So number one, I think we first should understand why is storytelling important at all, right? What are the elements of your story? People remember stories. My hope is the next time you see me, if I'm behind a microphone, you'll remember that the first time I spoke behind a microphone, I was 10. That maybe has stuck with you because if I rattled off statistics or data about public speaking, that doesn't really resonate. So think, you know, people remember stories. Think about your own experiences. Now again, we'll talk about this more. The environment in which you're speaking, it could be a job interview, it could be a networking event, it could be an investor you're talking to because you have a startup or you have an idea, um, it could be a new business opportunity. Think through your own experiences and what makes them stand out. And also what makes you as a person uniquely qualified to talk about what you're discussing, to engage with the person that you want to talk to and learn from. And also depending on your audience, this is one of my favorites, have two or three examples, right, that you can think of, that you can have in your back pocket. If you get asked a question, you can talk about them. If you think we have so many experiences in our lives, it's easy to you know, forget one that could be relevant. But if you have a few good stories, 
A few good things that highlight your leadership, highlight your skills, highlight your abilities, to be able to share those in a storytelling way is really helpful. It also makes you much more memorable. So for some things, this is one of the communication tips that I think through, especially if someone is talking about a business idea or a new venture, but it could apply anywhere. What is the problem you're trying to solve? It's the so what. Why is it that you are talking about this particular topic? And how do you or your product or your platform or your business or your team provide a solution in the field you're working in? And also, is there a gap in what is currently offered? Let's say you offer a particular skill or you know a team or a company needs a particular person who can do certain things. Maybe it's language skills, maybe it's technical skills. Make sure you highlight those. They're not a mind reader. So you have to be able to share those pieces of your own background that make you stand out. So this one I cannot underemphasize. You have to know your message. What messages are you trying to con convey and what are the core values? If people were walking away, would they remember three things about you? Right? And to be able to do that, you have to be purposeful in the message and the storytelling. So what I would suggest is think through three key messages. Whenever we have an announcement, so tomorrow we've got some news breaking for Google. My spokespeople, I give them three key messages and say, if I knew nothing about this topic, if I was completely blind to this topic, I would want to know these three things after reading this article or after watching this segment. So think through again from a job interview. If it's 30 minutes long, you're going to talk about a lot of things. But what are the three things you want that person to remember about you? Right? What are those core values? And make sure that they're not necessarily wildly different, whether they're not too repetitive, but what makes you stand apart and what do you hope to achieve with that? The second one is very, very much related to the first one. So the audience really informs the message. So the way I'm talking here in this group is very different than if I was talking to a group that I knew, for example, were MBA students only, or startup folks only. This is a diverse group, and so this is a much more general message. But having this broad range of anecdotes helps you, to, like, first of all, be able to apply it to different audiences. But also, if you don't know your audience, that message that you share is going to feel muddled. It may not feel as relevant. The way I talk to a reporter about Google is very different than how I talk to my family. The way I talk to a regular consumer is very different than how I talk to someone who's in the field. So it just depends on the audience. This is what I would suggest, number one, especially if we have technical people in the audience. Avoid being too technical, and here's a perfect example as to why. So I used to work with the Google Translate team, and they were doing a blog post. The one on the, on the side is the technical side. And I'm going to read this, and I quickly get lost myself. By integrating Google Goggle's optical character recognition OCR technology, we've made it possible for the use of your camera and your smartphone. Goes on and on, talks about OCR, machine translation, powerful statistical models. <sighs> Sorry, did I fall asleep there? All they were trying to say was that you could take a picture with your phone and translate it on your mobile. That's all they were trying to say. But they got bogged down into the details because they're so close to the work. This one, we were launching offline translate, and all this was trying to say was you could pre-download language packs onto your phone, and so if you don't have a data connection, you can still talk. This is how we started it. Have you ever found yourself lost in a foreign country wishing you knew how to say, I'm lost, or I'm allergic to nuts? The internet and Google Translate can help, but what if you don't have a connection? This is much more understandable, right? I like to joke that I use my mom as the litmus test. Is this written in a way my mom could understand? Or my dad, or anyone who's not close to it? So as you're thinking about talking about yourself even, it doesn't have to be this technical language either. Think through, if you're so close to something, it's hard to get the perspective outside of it to talk about it in a way that someone who doesn't know you or know the topic can understand. So that's what we'll work on a little bit later, is how to get that right and how to refine it. But remember this example when thinking about kind of technical. Way too much mumbo jumbo going on over there, much more relatable over here. So defining your call to action, this could be a lot of different things. It could actually just be you know, leaving a positive imprint on the person you've met. If you're selling, if you're trying to talk about your business or the services you offer, the call to action could be, you know, email me, I'd like to meet with you and have a conversation, or try my product, or I would like this job, whatever it might be. So that call to action is just remember at the end, especially when you're meeting someone, 
One of the hardest things in a networking opportunity is to say, I'd love to get together to talk with you, Ellie June. But if Ellie's really busy, it's really hard for her to know that if what my call to action is asking her, what's, what it's asking her of. If I say, Ellie June, you know, I'm actually looking for a job and it's going to be in the social services center, do you think you can help me a little bit and connect me to someone in that space? Ellie knows if she spends 20 minutes with me and is able to connect me, that's been something that's beneficial. But if I just have an open-ended call to action, she may not be able to prioritize me. That's one thing to keep in mind. But if Ellie's really busy, it's really hard for her to know that if what my call to action is asking her, what's, what it's asking her of. If I say, Ellie June, you know, I'm actually looking for a job, and it's going to be in the social services center, do you think you can help me a little bit and connect me to someone in that space? Ellie knows if she spends 20 minutes with me and is able to connect me, that's been something that's beneficial. But if I just have an open-ended call to action, she may not be able to prioritize me. That's one thing to keep in mind. How you deliver your message is more important than what you're actually delivering. Body language is really important. The speed at which you speak, which I need to practice, I should tell you a quick story, actually. When I was practicing for that first Persian Center event, my dad would film me on this old camp in Royal Yabosha. And I learned those things very early. And so speak more slowly than normal, especially if you're in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. If it's a job interview, you're going to walk in a little bit nervous, right? Take a deep breath. Make sure that you're not just blazing through your examples. Maintain eye contact. Smile is one of my favorite ones because it's a perfect way to, I mean, first of all, make people engage with you and feel good. You yourself will be more energized, but my favorite way to end a question I wish I wasn't asked was to just smile at the end. <laughs> it's just a, little, just a little tip. And then if you're doing a phone interview, I found that actually speaking on the phone while standing is a good tip because you project more and you're able to just, I think it just brings a little bit more confidence. So. Just some tricks I've learned along the way. This is one of my favorite ones. Repetition never spoiled the prayer. So the idea is if you know what those key messages are, if you know those three main things that you want someone to remember about what you've said, share it again. So here I'll say my two that I want you to remember is to know your audience and know your message. So me repeating this here will hopefully underline it one more time that these are important things to remember from this conversation. But think through, if you are trying to convince someone of something, just because you said it once doesn't mean they'll remember. So repetition never spoiled the prayer. Know when and how to pivot. This I love, especially for those hard conversations that a smile can get you out of. <laughs> there will be some of those. And so I use this a lot because I work with reporters, and reporters have a lot of tough questions. And as a spokesperson, you often have to answer them, and you can't give a non-answer. A no comment is no fun. But you have to also be able to say, you know, I think that's a great question, but the way we look at it is, for example. So what I would say, a graceful pivot is really important, and never get defensive when asked a tough question. Let's say someone is looking at your resume and they say, well, you know, you don't have enough experience in this department, but, and then you quickly have an emotional response. You never want to repeat back to someone and say, well, it's not that I don't have enough experience, but I just, because now you framed your response in their negativity. Imagine if your response to that question was something like, you know, I've had a really great range of experience in my background, and while I may not have as much specific experience for this particular job, this, this, and this has prepared me to work in a new environment, and I'm a really fast learner. You've made it a positive response and not framed in their negativity. I always like to say this one, take a breath when you're asked something negative or it's a tough kind of situation. Um, and again, phrase it with things like, that's a great question, or the way I see it is, or we're very thoughtful about that issue, which is why we've done this or that. So see how you can apply those in your own environments, and again, not just in interviews, but in like work environments. There's oftentimes there could be tension or, or difficult questions. And practice, 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 and then maybe practice a little bit more. What I like to say is practice makes progress. I don't think there's necessarily perfect. But the idea is that the more you practice what you're saying, the more you think through your message, the sharper it will be, the more concise and powerful it will be. And so I think I'm a big fan of practicing in front of the mirror. Again, I was lucky that my baba gave me that practice with the filming early on. 
but talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to your roommates. And the thing that's important with that is they may make you realize something you didn't. They may see a hole in what you're trying to say about your own story that you didn't. And of course, more practice equals more confidence. This one in particular, especially for like a job interview or a conversation, this, this here's a really hard question, right? It shouldn't be hard, but it is. Tell me about yourself, right? We, we get that question a lot. Depending on the audience, the answer changes. If it's a job interview, it's something that you want to tailor to the job. I would never respond to that question with, it was a warm day in June of 1985 when I was born. <laughs> you know, you don't start back that far, right? You obviously pick and choose, you go to chin, the things that you want to share. Think about your key messages of that go chin, of those things that are just super important to share. That's why that practice matters. The advice I give anyone when they're thinking particularly about job interviews is how do you answer that first question? You know, if it's a job related to, again, administrative work or accounting, you're not going to talk about your love for soccer. <laughs> you may do that at the end when they want to get to know you. But you are going to talk about your certifications, your skills, your experience, and you want to weave a narrative that brings it all back to why you are uniquely qualified. So be strategic in the way that you practice as well. So just general tips, again, I'm going to repeat my, again, repetition never spoiled the prayer. Know your audience and know your message. Be authentic in the way that you engage with people, right? Be mindful of their time and see, think through what you're asking of them. In some cases, this is an important part too. If you're emailing or connecting with someone who's probably very busy, you have to remember that you may not be the most important part of their day. It's hard to remember that. That recruiter or that person you're talking to is the most important part of your day. You are waiting to hear from them. You want to know, but they have maybe 50 other things on their plate. So be mindful of their time and be gracious when you engage. And again, I think the idea of a call to action makes that part a lot easier. And then be gracious but persistent and always send or say thank you. That one I can't say enough. I've taken many times to, you know, 30 minutes on the phone with someone who was interested in Georgetown or was curious about foreign policy. And that thank you note goes a long way. Those who don't, it's very hard for me to want to pick up the phone another time and invest 30 more minutes to talk to them. Whereas the person who is gracious and said, thank you, of course I'll do that again. So I'm going to transition to personal branding, and then I'm sure there are questions in the audience, but this part is very connected to the first. And am I going too fast here, or is this OK? All right. So what is personal branding? What is this, what is this kind of? What is, what is this term? What, what does this all mean? So um, I would call this personal branding 101. It's the idea that people are marketing themselves and their careers and their backgrounds as brands. And so the thoughtfulness that a brand has in its perception of how people view it is also now how people are viewing themselves. And that's in many ways because we now all have social media, we all have this Sohangu, we have this platform. How do you use that to make sure people are seeing you in the way you want to be seen? So this is how I see myself, and I'm gonna ask you all to do this. So if I were to think about myself in these three ways, if I'm thoughtful about this, I would say that I'm positive by nature. Uh, I think I'm knowledgeable in communications and hardworking for my company and my community. And I try to be a leader by example. These are the things that I know to be true about myself. The hope is that the work that I do every day and the things that I try to commit myself to and dedicate myself to reinforce these things. Right? So now the question I have is, how do you see yourself? If you were to think about three things and the way that you want to lead or the way that you want to excel in your job, what are three things you know to be true about yourself? So just take a moment. Think about it for a second. There won't be a quiz, but just a good exercise to think through. So the way I see it is that you are the builder and creator of your personal brand. And the things that you do reinforce that in so many ways. So the way I see it is that conversation of how you view yourself, now it's three or more things, of course. We're all very, you know, we're multifaceted people, but the way those things that you view yourself and the way others view you, that middle point in the Venn diagram is how your brand is built. Is that association? Yes, Ellie June is a dependable, thoughtful, caring leader. That's how I see her. 
hope that's the way you see yourself as well, because that's how you exude in the community. That is, that is what I would think of as your personal brand. So the way I see it is how you mesh these two, how you bring these two things together, and then how you build on that really is an indicator of your personal brand. Now, this does not mean you have to be the loudest person in the room. Not everyone is talkative. Not everyone is an extrovert. It does not mean that you're shouting about all these things all the time. It could be through your actions. It could be through the things you write. It could be through your one-on-one -on -one interactions, and then you multiply that, and of course you have a network effect. It does not mean that you have to be just fully out there all the time. But think about the things that make you, again, uniquely positioned. Maybe you're an amazing writer, but you're not as comfortable public speaking. Maybe you can weigh in and do other things that are much more in line with your background. So I think it really means being authentic and thoughtful in your approach. So again, not necessarily the loudest person, but everything that you do do touches with, you know, has a touch of authenticity and is thoughtful in what you're doing. And again, maybe working towards that middle point of the Venn diagram between how you view yourself and how others view you. Remember, personal brands are not built overnight. These things take a lot of time. They are not a silver bullet where you're like, if I do this one thing, People will think of me this way. It has to be consistent, and that's why the authenticity matters, right? I'm not necessarily an athlete, so I'm not gonna build my personal brand as being some athlete, right? It's not gonna happen overnight. If I wanna commit myself to it long term, sure. But if I think about the skills I have right now, how can I make sure to reinforce those? And so these are some takeaways that I've thought through, and again, this is by no means a scientific study. This is my own experience, so there's probably a lot more here as well. But my pillars for this or that, again, be authentic in everything you do. When you commit yourself to something, whether it's a job or volunteer work or networking, really be in it. Really feel the passion for it. And if you, if you don't feel that now, think there's something that you do have passion for and maybe lean towards that direction. Find out, and this goes to the next one, next one as well, find out what you love to do and really thrive at it. Really take the time to be an expert in what you're doing. I'd like this one, become a force to be reckoned with. Build and maintain a strong digital presence, so website, social, thought leadership. You know, if you're a business owner, if you are someone who's budding in the business space, you want to be known for that. So you actually, we're all very lucky that we're living in this age and that we can amplify. But remember, it's noisy out there. So if you are using social media, if you are using your website and your blog, make sure you're, again, authentic and thoughtful because it can be very noisy. Gain subject matter expertise and share it. And build your network and don't be shy to ask for help. I always like to say no one can help you if they don't know you're looking. And so when you connect with someone, there's no assumption that Ellie June is going to help me with something because I've now met her. I have to build a relationship. I have to know what I'm asking for. So think about that as you do enter, let's say, a new field or you're going to an event. Think, what can I bring to the table and what can I maybe gain from someone who's in the room? And thank you for joining me. Thank you.